So now we're going to go to this uh, last phase of our discussion, and here we're going to talk about this multi-cluster uh, scaling, the uh, multi-site. And again, my name is Frank Yu. I'm with Kemp Technologies. We do low balancing, low balancing solutions, and we're here talking about how we integrate with Dell EMC, ECS, Elastic Cloud Storage, Object Storage Solutions with our load balancing technology. So in this discussion, we're going to talk about multi-site and that DNS manipulation to provide access to the multiple sites. So there we go. Going back to this reference architecture we showed again, just so everybody's on the same page. Now I'm going to start discussing how we have these two sites. We have Site 1 New York, Site 2 Las Vegas. And we also have this global DNS load balancer sitting in the middle here. It could be somewhere in the environment in the nebulous cloud or different data. It could also be part of the same load master. It's up to you. It's just a matter of how you partition the technologies. And what we're doing now is when these applications make a request to push or pull objects from the ECS environment, they're going to first make a DNS request of where to go to. That DNS request will go to here because this guy here, this global DNS load balancer is now authoritative for that specific FQDN, such as ecs.kempdemo.com. Because kempdemo.com, if you understand uh, DNS technology, will then be, will, will delegate the ecs.kempdemo.com to the load balancer as an NS record, name server record, okay? So now, since this device is providing the DNS responses, he's also doing the health checking of the multiple sites. So he's only going to give a DNS response that's appropriate for the availability for the different applications requesting the access. And I want to take a one step back. When we talk about low server low balancing, I want to make sure we understand the complexity of how DNS works, because this is important for us to understand how the GSLB works. And we think, oh, DNS is easy, we send a request, we get a response, it all works. There is a lot more underlying if you ever dealt with DNS infrastructure. So here I have my diagram. I have my client here on the left-hand side. I have my local DNS server, which is the DNS server that's configured for my client. I have my various DNS servers chain here for the root DNS servers, if you know what the root servers are, the .com server, acme.com, and I here I did at a delegated app.acme.com to my GSLP device in terms of name server configuration. And this guy is doing health checks to my two sites. So here are my ECS nodes for site A and site B, Las Vegas and New York, okay? And the DNS process first, the client makes a request to the local DNS server. The local DNS server itself, not the client, is gonna make recursive queries to the root DNS who tells it to go to the com DNS, to go to the acme.com DNS server, and he makes those recursive queries. And then finally, he knows to make their query to the GSLB device, who's the name server authority for app.acme.com, who then provides the response. And then finally, that response goes from the local DNS server back to the client, and now the client gets the, gets the response. From the user client side, this is all we see, step one, step six. But on the back end, there's all this other stuff happening. Make sense? Great. Got it? <coughs> so, and then once the application gets that DNS response, now, like we know, it can make the connection to the actual site itself, whichever site the GSLB device gave the response for. Mm -hmm. So now that we're on the same page about how DNS works, how this global server load balancing technology works, I'm going to come back to Kurt. And Kurt, if you want to start the demo for the second piece yep. of this presentation. So we have about about 10 minutes left. So what I'll again set the stage here. Uh, this environment, I've, it's already been set up, so we're just going to walk through what the configuration looks like on these uh, two sites. Once again, we have Vegas, we have New York, Vegas being the 192, New York being the 10 dot. Also in here that's not on the, uh, the build out is the DNS servers, as Frank just mentioned on a prior slide. So these application servers are talking to DNS servers. And, and in this lab environment, the DNS servers are delegating to the load balancers for ecs.kempdemo.com. So what I want to do for, as part of this demo, and there's a lot of ways that we can intelligently route this traffic across these sites. 
Um, in this environment, we're going to be doing location-based. So the app that's in Vegas, I want that app to access the storage in Vegas. And the app that's in New York, I want to uh, access the storage in New York. Now, the ECS environment typically will, would have a replication group so the data is the same across. So if we have to fail over, the data is there. In this environment, I don't have a replication group because I wanted to have unique buckets on each side so we could see where we're connecting to. It was just much clearer for, for demo purposes. So just real quick, this goes back to your earlier question about how do you make sure there's consistency when you go to the different locations. <clears throat> there's back-end work being done within the, the storage system through ECS to make sure there's replication if the replication is configured. Really what I was getting at is something like S3 is eventually consistent, so you have to your application has to know where to expect certain data. ECS looks like it's strongly consistent so you don't have to do that work. Correct, and there's th there's ways that, that we're actually talking about and hopefully we'll have time to discuss in terms of how we're changing some th things in terms of doing some hashing and algorithms to provide that consistency yeah. for S3, that, that, that's S3 where, for that's example. That's the, the part I really wanted to wait for. Uh, and, and I'll get through this demo ver very quickly uh, so I can we can talk about that. Okay, so uh, here's the actual environment that we set up before, uh, Vegas. If I jump over to New York, it's the same configuration, except obviously the 10.0 network versus the 192. Uh, if I'm going to go back over to Vegas and kind of start showing you <coughs> some of the configurations. So the first thing I want to show you is under remote access. Here we need to set up our partners. So this is taking the two load masters and setting them up as partners. So therefore, the, the global um, balancing configuration can be synchronized between the two of them. So we have them, and it's healthy. The partner status is up. Again, we're on the 192, you can see the 10 dot and everything's good. If I go under global balancing, the first thing we have this concept of clusters. So another, um, again, we're doing location based, based on uh, IP address. But as you can see up here, we can also do it based on um, the coordinates, you know, latitude, longitude. So we can actually set coordinates based on proximity. That'll be for another day. Uh, this one, we're just doing a location, but we, and, and we'll also look at some other configuration that we can do on here as well. But the idea here is we need to set up these clusters so we can leverage the cluster checking to do better uh, health checking across the two, uh, the two sites. And I'll show you that uh, in, in just a second. Here's the custom locations I set up for New York, New York and Vegas, associated some IP addresses. As you can see up there, we can also support IPv6, as, as Frank talked about before, so we can do this global balancing with IPv6 as well. Under manage FQDNs, this is where we're really going to get a lot of um, the configuration here. So we have our name, ecs.chemtim.com. We're doing location-based. Uh, if I go and modify, we have this uh, criteria. Again, we could do something simply as round robin, back and forth between the sites. We could do a fixed weighting, which is going to be more of an active-passive configuration. We have, as I said before, proximity, but we're using location-based in this environment. Down below, we could see that we're using the cluster checks to see the actual health of the virtual service to make sure that the environment's up and running. <coughs> you can see both of them are up. If I go down to uh, locations, I'm using custom locations, but we can select things like continent and country and things like that as well. But again, since we're using the custom, we just uh, selected them on the, uh, pulled them over to the right side. And as you can see on the New York side, everything is replicated over because we have that partner configuration set up and everything is in sync. And we have that site redundancy in the event that a whole site goes down, the other one can pick up on that. So what I have here is I have two clients uh, over here. We're connected to Vegas. Like I said, you can see the bucket over here, Vegas, over there, New York. If I do a ping to ecs.chemtemo.com in Vegas, I'm getting a 192 uh, response. If I do the same thing in New York, I'm getting a 10 dot. So now what I'm gonna do is go back to the load master in Vegas and uh, simulate uh, a failure. So I'm just gonna go to that uh, S3 virtual service, uncheck the box to deactivate it. And this could be, you know, whether it be like a WAN outage or even, you know, a, a whole site outage, um, just kind of simulating that. So we're gonna do a, valid a revalidation really quick. And now if we go back to global balancing and we look at FUDNs, we'll see that that site's down. So 192, 192 uh, 168 is down. So now if I go back to my clients, now if I ping that again, I'm getting the 10 dot, it's failed over to New, uh, New York. And of course, New York's still gonna respond to 10 dot. Now if I go over here, I'll close the uh, S3 browser because it's not gonna refresh by itself, open it back up, and now I'll see I got the New York bucket there. 
So that was a real quick demo. We have a couple minutes to go through uh, what's coming next. So let's do that real quick. This is the part I wanted to talk about. So first, let's talk about what ECS is doing with a multi-site configuration, a three-site configuration uh, or more. So the concept here to have the site resilience is there's going to be ch uh, chunks written to each of the sites. You see site one has chunk A, site two has chunk B. Those are getting replicated up to site three. And then they have the concept of XOR, which is going to take chunk A, chunk B, make it into chunk C, and, and there you're going to have the storage efficiency. So why, does, why do we care about this from, from a load balancing perspective? When data is written to one of these three sites, and the idea is you want to distribute the traffic evenly across these three sites. So we're doing that on the load balancing side. But where the data is written, uh, it, that site becomes the owner of that data. So if you're getting reads on that object that you wrote there, you want to be sure that you send it to that site. Because you, you can send it to another site, but what's going to happen is that site's going to have to communicate with site one, pull that across the WAN, cache it, and then deliver it back. It's much more uh, efficient if we can just direct it to the owner of the site, which knows it has the latest version of that uh, uh, object. So we're doing that with a, a, a hash algorithm, which we'll be um, uh, adding in our next release. Um, and what we'll be able to do <coughs> is, based on that hash algorithm, we'll be able to know where that data was written to. And when, write, uh, when reads come in, we'll be able to send it to the right site. And then also have failure, uh, failover in the event that that site's down. Right, you want to take the, the last slide and then uh, wrap it up? Great. So I have about a minute left, and I'll take about a minute to talk about this because it's really quick. The other thing that we want to do, going back to the big data analytics, is we really want to tie the Kemp technology analytics we have with our management with ECS more. So we're continuing to work with Dell EMC ECS to find ways to integrate the analytics and the great information about the application health and availability along with ECS to tie that together to give you a better picture of how the application in ECS is performing and give you really and truly ultimately this AI ML machine <coughs> learning to give you more uh, automated loops in, in terms of processing and automating the process to keep the application healthy for your customers. So this is what we're working on, on uh, as well with Adobe EMC very closely. So last slide, just uh, anything else, just please reach out to us. We're more than happy to answer any questions that you have. We appreciate it.